Hello everyone, and welcome to this mini-lecture on Nathaniel Hawthorne and his short story, Young Goodman Brown. So, Nathaniel Hawthorne lived 1804 to 1864, and he's renowned in American literature as one of the early and most, uh, most profound American literary fictional authors. Um, he writes a decent amount of... Uh, a, a, fairly significant range of work that is clearly still read today, is still adapted today. People are still interested by Hawthorne and his work. Uh, he was born and grew, you know, grew up and came back and forth to Salem, Mass. That's Salem, Massachusetts. Uh, and some of his work is based in Salem, Massachusetts, such as his famous novel, A House of Seven Gables. You can actually go to Salem, Massachusetts and actually visit the House of Seven Gables. Uh, he, familial-wise, he has historical roots all the way back to the 1600s. Um, some of his, his earlier ancestors played different roles in the Salem Witch Hunt, in which he comes back to um, several times within his writings at different times, or makes mention to, and just the idea of this of the early Puritan time and the, the challenges that it offered um, people and thus gave him some question and concern around faith and religion and belief. Uh, his earliest work was Feng Shui, Feng Shui uh, which almost sounds like Feng Shui, Feng Shui uh, and that came out in 1828. Uh, but he started to hit real success or, or real prominence as he moved later in life with some more significant works. Twice Told Tales was a short story collection, um, and many of the stories in that collection are stories that we consider classic Hawthorne today. The Scarlet Letter uh, which, uh, came out in 1850, and it is a novel that you may have had to read in high school, um, I would always recommend going back to those those texts that you're required to read and read them when you're ready to read them when you're more you know when you want to read them at your leisure and Scarlet Letter I think is a very fascinating one because so much of what goes on with the main character Hester Prynne and the world in which she lives in has all sorts of curious implications for the world today. The House of Seven Gables as I mentioned that came out in 1851 um, and you, that is also another interesting, it's a, bo both Scarlet Letter and House of Seven Gables have certain elements to them that are uh, almost magical. Um, that There's a fantastical element to some of the stories that Hawthorne tells. And we, we see that certainly with uh, Young Goodman Brown. So he wrote Young Goodman Brown in 1835. And we're going to take a look at this story and kind of play around and, and talk about what's going on and what do we see with this story. So uh, the story is about going into the woods, right? And so if we go back to our lessons on fiction, uh, we know that in some ways this is a journey. And so the question is, what kind of journey is it and what does or doesn't happen? So here we have the opening. Young Goodman Brown came forth at sunset into the street at Salem Village, but put his head back after crossing the threshold, uh, after crossing the threshold to exchange a, a parting kiss with his young wife and Faith, as the wife was aptly named, thrust her own pretty head into the street, letting the wind play by, uh, wind play with the pink ribbons on her cap while she called to Goodman Brown. So let's take a take it. Let's just before we move any further, look at this opening paragraph. Young Goodman Brown came forth at sunset, which is an interesting time to come forth. Typically, we, you know, if you're setting out on a quest, you set out, of course, in the morning. You set out at sunrise, but he's setting out at sunset. So already something seems to be to to raise a question, but. Yeah, so he comes forth, but puts his head back, right? So there seems to be some kind of back... There seems to be something holding him back after crossing the threshold. Now, that's an interesting word, threshold, because threshold in this case means doorway. But we can also see that threshold is kind of a, a point of no return, 
right? If somebody's reached their threshold, they're at a point, you know, they're at they're at a point they cannot no longer stand to be, they or they can no longer tolerate. And what does he do? He wants to exchange a parting kiss with his wife. Faith. So what is he doing? Literally, young Goodman Brown, young Goodman Brown is setting forth and kissing Faith goodbye. Right? He's he's to exchange a parting kiss with his young wife. Well, who's his young wife? Faith. So he's kissing Faith goodbye. Right? It's a very interesting play that's going on here. And Faith, as the wife was aptly named, and we have to wonder why or how or is he, you know is is Hawthorne being ironic? thrust her own pretty head into the street, letting the wind play with the pink ribbons of her cap and call to Goodman Brown. So Faith is calling out to Goodman Brown. And this is something you want to play within the short story, is that idea of Faith. The capital F Faith of that is the woman's name. Faith as in a religious belief, and capital F Faith as in a Christian spiritual belief. Dearest heart, whispered she, softly and rather sadly, when her lips were close to his ear, pray thee, put off your journey until sunrise, and sleep in your own bed tonight. A lone woman is tr is troubled with such dreams, such thoughts, that she's afeard of herself sometimes. Pray tarry with me this night, dear husband, of all nights in this in the year. My love and my faith, replied young Goodman Brown, of all nights in the year, this one night I must tarry away from thee. My journey, as thou callest it, forth and back again, must needs be done twixt now and sunrise. What, my sweet pretty wife, dost thou doubt me already, and we but three months married? So again, we're, we're playing around here with, with some of the, the ideas here, and what we have here, you know, in that in that first paragraph is we have faith doubting young Goodman Brown, right? Saying, you don't want to do this. Not tonight. Don't do this. So we have a doubting faith, right? She's she's doubtful of, of what's happening. And then we also have young Goodman Brown questioning faith, right? And notice he says, my love and my faith. Um, so again, he's playing on that idea of faith as, as a wife, as well as faith as this idea and he questions faith what my sweet pretty wife does thou doubt me already and we but married three months so he's questioning faith faith is doubting him these are all signs that whatever is about to happen is not a good thing um that there there are definitely things we sh that to be aware of and to be questioning and to be concerned about um and that these both both these characters don't see it or rather one sees it and the other doesn't you know speaks to what some of the the tension is within this story then god bless you said faith with pink ribbons and may you find all well when you come back now in some ways that that feels like a a threat right then god bless you in that case she's really meaning please god bless you and may you find all well when you come back right there's the implication that that he may not there's a sense of her in saying that may you find all well when you come back that this just may not happen amen cried goodman brown say thy prayers dear faith and go to bed at dusk and do no and, and no harm will come to thee so he, goodman brown is arguing that no harm will beset his faith of course, we have to wonder if that's exactly what's going to happen. So they parted, and the young man pursued his wanted young the young man pursued his way until being about to turn the corner by the meeting house, he looked back and saw the head of faith still peeping after him with a melancholy air in spite of her pink ribbons. So again, you know, he's they've distance, he's le or he's leaving and he takes one last look. He he looks fondly upon Faith and Faith is is still looking after him. His Faith is still there, although in this melancholy air. 
Poor little Faith, thought he, his heart smote. What a wretch I am to leave her on such an errand. She talks of dreams, too. Methought, methought as she spoke, there was trouble in her face, as if a dream had warned her what work is to be done tonight. But no, no, t'would kill her to think it. Well, she's a blessed angel on earth, and after this one night I cling to her skirts and follow her to heaven. So, we have young Goodman Brown, who has now parted with his faith. And he sees his faith as poor and little. And he is angry with himself. He considers himself a wretch for parting with his faith, but sees what he has to do as more important. And notice at the, at the end there, he's saying, you know, well, you know, she's a blessed angel on earth. And after this one night, I will, cl you know, I will cling to her skirts and follow her, her to heaven. Right? So I need to abandon faith to do what I need to do. But then I promise I will be back with her shortly. So hopefully you get a sense of this game that's going on with the word faith. And, and there seems there's no characters in here that don't seem to represent something else that are invoking some larger concern, some larger idea. And so as you get into the story, that's really what you want to be aware of is the ways in which Hawthorne is setting up the characters, the actions to all to mean something more. Right. So as we said before, with symbolism, symbolism can be in names, they can be in objects, but they can also be in action. So again, that idea of of young Goodman Brown, you know, leaning back and kissing Faith goodbye, of parting with with Faith, those are symbolic. They're not just, you know, him saying goodbye to his wife, but they're him saying goodbye to his Faith. And as you read the story and you get to the end, you, you know, that's something you want to be aware of is what were all those signs that told us this was going to happen. All right, thank you for watching and see you in the next video.